Hello everybody and welcome back to Space Engine. Um <laughs> I actually try okay, I tried filming earlier and uh I was doing some like I was, I was trying to go to places people had recommended cuz I have two of them here and they're random star designations. So one of them's RS8474-1824-4-4-2096 1509 and the other one, same kind of thing, RS8409, 6, 7. Anyways, point being, uh, when I type those in to like the, the search catalog, the game's like, sorry, those don't exist. Um, like, here I go, like, RS8474-1824-4-2097. Uh, Dash four, no eight. Dash two zero nine six. Dash one five zero nine. And I say okay, and <sighs> way to make me look like an idiot. This game, way to make me look like an idiot. I swear to God, it was not working for like 20 minutes before this. I had to restart the game. Maybe it was glitched. I don't know. Son of a bitch. Oh, whatever. <laughs> At any rate, either way, in this in this uh, video, I'm gonna try to you know be in this ship as much as much as possible. So we're gonna go there. Um, oh, where's the labels? Where, hmm, not, not my where's my pointer? Where are we going? Does the pointer not exist? I guess the pointer doesn't exist. Oh, there we go. So now it's going to kill its speed, and we're going to go from there. Anyways. <laughs> so I guess it is going to work. Now I was just doing something horribly wrong last time. But I seriously, I spent 20 minutes trying to get it to work, and it wasn't going to work, and I had to, like, scrap that entire recording because it was just me failing at typing numbers. Oh, whatever. I'm gonna speed this up a little bit. Wait for it to do its thing so we can get into warp. I wanna, I wanna go to warp and I wanna go warp to things and do th fun stuff. Yeah, this is apparently a carbon star that I missed in the last video. So, whoa, okay. Wow. That was fast. Um, right. I can't get the camera to, like, move properly. Oh. Whoa. I mean, I guess that's on the outside of the thing. It's all blue shifted and stuff. It's pretty, but it also looks kind of broken. Well, okay. And then it's kind of red shifted and blue, and it's all shiny and pretty. Look at that warp flying through. Well, I guess it's just normal space, but you're warping it. All right, speed things up. Are we actually getting there? The distance seems to have changed dramatically. I'm disturbed, guys. coming up on it. Unless it's going to jump back up to some up god ungodly number. 11 layers, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And we, uh, we're just going to keep going. What the fuck? I think I broke the game again. Okay, one minute. Now we're, cause now we're flying around from it, so we're gonna do this. Oh, yeah, I, d I did break the game again. It's doing this thing again. Ah, <sighs> one second. Right, now what did we learn, kids? Uh, yeah, don't touch the camera when, when we're in warp, because it breaks things. Actually, I just friends one time, and I was like, when I was in like, the previous recording, and I was in warp, and the ship started like moving to the side, and it started telling me like, you know, unstable, um, unstable warp, realign with the target, and I was like, 
what do you, what do you want about? And then it got really mad at me, and then the game started like, or the ship started like, not functioning, and it was, it was scary. <laughs> so I'm just gonna not touch anything, I'll just orbit around it like this, and let it do its thing. Um, I wish there was a way to like, move the camera and stuff without damaging things. Doing that, I think, is what breaks the camera. So we're not going to do that when, when we're in warp. I, you, I, I, hmm, I wish it was like you could like scroll to zoom in and out, but uh, that's apparently not a thing. Switching view, behind view, auto view, behind view. Oh, that's that's all I can do. All right. Eh, whatever. Uh, well, it does do its thing and get into warp. It's only four light years away, it shouldn't be too difficult. But it has to kill our velocity for whatever reason. Like, I'm no warp specialist, but I'm pretty sure uh, you don't have to kill your velocity before going into Alcubierre warp. But maybe I'm just full of shit, I don't know. Yeah, okay, so we're not going to touch things while we're doing this. Uh, we're coming up on it really fast. Oh. I might hop out of the ship and go investigate it, you know, just because, but... Boop. And we're here. Now I'm going to do this, and I'm going to, how do I remove, yeah. I would like to get out of the spaceship, please. I'll do this manually, um, build, I'll do this, build, then I'll take control of this one, and my goodness, and then I'll destroy it, and I'll be out, and free. Destroy. Boop. And it breaks again. Hmm. Ah, oh, there we go. Uh oh Alright then, let's go to this carbon star. That, the graphics die when I look at it. That's really weird. That is, that is really weird. I don't know what I can do, guys. Okay, hmm. Hmm. Oh, wait. There we go. And we're back. Alright, got some information on this here thing. I may have to reinstall the game again, I don't, I'm not sure. Or it's just, you know, it's kind of broken. Um, we're looking at Carbon Star. Yes. Fantastic. All right, but uh, it's breaking my my game whenever I look at it. So we're not gonna look at it anymore. We're gonna go take control of the sp spaceship. Kind of like Carl Sagan's spaceship with the imagination, but not actually. Um, all right then, let's go to the other uh, RS one. This one is RS eight eight four zero nine dash six five six dash five dash two seven nine one two dash five one space four. Oh, it doesn't exist. Four. That one doesn't exist either. Is there a dash? No? Hmm. Yeah, so that one doesn't exist, apparently. Or I'm just bad. But, uh, right then. Let's get out of here, shall we? Let's find a random place to go invade. Uh, white sequence binary, triple giant. 
find somewhere exciting to go. Probably somewhere far, far away. Eh, let's just go there. Why not? If we line up to kill our velocity. I'll just do this to uh, speed things along. Because I like to speed things along in ways that are fast and exciting. It to save time. I don't know, a couple versions ago, you'd click, like, warp, and it would just warp you, like, it would turn into warp there, there was no bullshit, but, uh, I guess going for realism or something. Yay. Whoa. And we're away at very fast speeds. Yeah, this is definitely just Alcubierre, uh, basically just manipulate space around you to move faster than light without actually moving. But who knows what what type or what uh, engine will inevitably use if, well, they turn to be real. A QB Air or some kind of hyperdrive. Again, I'm, I, I kind of like the Heim hyperdrive uh, because it, you know, probably doesn't exist, but it's still fun to, to imagine because the, the design for it is so really simple. And <laughs> it's actually pretty great because, like, theoretically, like, what it would operate on is, like, you pull the ship out of this space into a uh, a different adjacent layer of space where the laws of physics are a little different and then you can travel through this secondary space uh, to your destination where you then re-emerge in normal space basically like a hyper hyperdrive or going into a different dimension I don't know it sounds perfectly wonderful and perfectly safe and fine and excellent and I can't think of any situation in which um, that concept has been used to disastrous effect. Like it's, it's perfectly wholesome and can't cause problems and is, you know, shouldn't be worried about at all. Yeah. Anyways, um, where to go next? Ooh, there we go. That's what I'm looking for. I'm a member of the Starship not Enterprise. I uh, just explore too, I guess, what it's called. Where do the crew reside in this here vessel? I'm thinking of those modules in the front, because those big round ones, I think, are just fuel for the engines. That seems like an odd place to put uh, the crew quarters. <sighs> oh, I guess I'm tired. Yeah, because those fins on the side are obviously radiators for the engines, which are probably uh, antimatter engines by the looks of them. Because they got the coils and stuff all around them, you know. If you're building a warp ship, might as well use the antimatter engines, because then you have the best of both worlds. And then the Alcubierre rings, which uh, realistically would probably be more like a donut shape, because the thin rings uh, require way more energy than can be viably created. Because like when uh, Alcubierre first came up with the idea, uh, it, the rings were originally just like these thin rings like this, and they required like energy densities equivalent to the planet Jupiter, and that's just so not not cool. <laughs> but then recently, I think it was in 2012, uh, rethinking the metric, it's like if you make the rings more like donut shapes, so like thicker, uh, you can actually reduce the energy required down to like the uh, mass energy equivalent of like Voyager 1, so just a few kilograms, or a few hundred kilograms anyways, and uh, that's just pretty damn cool. But again, it doesn't require uh, extra layers of space, it just requires manipulating the fabric of space. So the ship doesn't actually move, it basically moves the universe around it. It's kind of like Futurama, I mean, not, you know, as funny. Traveling 16 light years to our destination in our wonderful spaceship of the not imagination. And then when we get here, I'll uh, fly on over to the planet. Hmm. Fun things are fun. Boost factor. Coming down to light speed, sublight speed. There we go. Boom. Alright then. Welcome to star system something or another. This one has a moon. 
Oh wait, no, the actual gas giant has life. Well, let's go there then. Now, is it gonna warp there, or am I gonna be stuck? Uh, no, no, it is in fact warping. Good, good, good. Because I don't have to wait um, months and months to get there. Because I'm lazy, damn it. I'm not lazy. Uh, on a time limit? Technically, I am, because my little counter is going up for 20 minutes. We're at 15 something now. It's gonna be fun, fun. Fun, fun, fun. Sitting here listening to the engines. I like that. <laughs> oh, wait, hey boy. Reference body, none. What's that supposed to mean? Alright, now let's warp on over to said planet. Ah! Yeah, because like, using a warp drive within the solar system is actually, you know, fairly viable. Uh, I know, like, some science fiction always have the thing where it's like you can't use your hyperdrive or your warp drive within the solar system because of debris and stuff. I think Warhammer is like that. Like, you have to, like, leave the solar system before you can activate the warp. Whoa, okay, okay, stop, stop, step, 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 stop, stop. Okay, good. Well, that planet. Isn't that pretty? Let's get some information on it, shall we? We are looking at... Um, general? Abiogenic, aerial, and organic multicellular. Fantastic. Actually, I found something while looking for stuff. Yeah, this. It's like locations, and it has like these weird little... Like... Things on them. Unusual colors, beautiful spike shadow between two giants. Night, like I don't know what this is, but it's really cool. Doomed life. That's so like. That's so metal. You know, I'm gonna like really sort of band and call it that. Doomed life. You know, using my guitar that I can hardly play. I still try, but it's more just a therapeutic thing than it is I actually play. <laughs> I've had a guitar since I was like 12. And I've only been able to do, like, very, like, I don't know, I've never really gotten good at it. I can just kind of, like, do stuff and just screw around with it. But whatever. Anyway, let's, let's get the hell out of here. Oh, shit, where was that? I was right here somewhere. So we can't have nice things. I click to fight. Ah, my reaction time. It was around here somewhere. <laughs> God damn it. Eh, whatever, we'll find somewhere else. We'll build our own planet with life. And we'll have blackjack and hookers. There we go. Um, let's set up our warp jump there. Yeah, I was actually contacting some companies about superconducting uh, wires. Uh, Again, I want to start playing around with that. Um, mostly related to my space program, like in like the theory division, but it's also just because it's fun. But uh, the biggest issue I have is that um, most superconductors require temperatures that are lower than even liquid nitrogen, and that's just as a real pain in the ass because that would require things like liquid helium, and liquid helium is really, really expensive and it's hard to get because, again, helium shortages. And just out of principle, I'd rather not waste liquid helium on my own frivolous pursuits because it's also used for things like MRI machines and actual scientific research. Like, if I could get, like, if I had access to it, it'd be great, but uh, I'm not willing to really do that. So I'm trying to find uh, superconducting wires that can be superconducted, like, that can be cooled using liquid nitrogen. Because liquid nitrogen is really cheap because it's incredibly easy to make, and it's incredibly abundant, because, you know, our atmosphere is made up of 70% nitrogen. Because, like, originally I was looking at, um, uh, kind of like the LHC and MRIs, they use, um, oh, what was it called? Niobium, there we go, they, they use, um, niobium tin, or, and, no, no, they use niobium, uh, steel. Oh, yeah, like, they use, um, it's, it's a mixture of steel and Niobium, obviously. Uh oh. I think we just—I think I just killed our ship, guys. 
Oh yeah, I fucked this up real good. Royally. Let's see if we can jump out of the atmosphere. Anyways, as I was saying, uh, they, they use niobium steel, and they want to change them to niobium tin at some point. Uh, because it, you get a far stronger... Uh, oh, that isn't going to work. That isn't going to work at all. Because you get far stronger magnetic fields uh, for better. Like for less. Eh, that's not going to work at all. Oh, wait. Ah, oh, we're falling into the planet. Yeah. When we're actually climbing out, I think. Something's happening. I don't know. <laughs> I'm Captain Kirk. Anyways, and um, I was looking at those originally, but um, niobium tin and niobium steel, uh, they superconduct at temperatures like... Uh, I forget the Kelvin, but it's like minus 200 and something. And minus 300 something, something, and it's like, yeah, you can't obtain those temperatures with, with liquid nitrogen, you need liquid helium for that. Yeah, I think I broke things, guys, we'll have to, uh... Hmm. I can just pretend this never happened by doing this. Ship, explore, destroy. And then I'll just hop out of the atmosphere. <sighs> oh, the atmosphere was that direction. Okay. Well, that looks exciting. Unfortunately, I think I lost my star. Anyways, yeah, so I've been contacting some suppliers on uh, superconducting wire that can, you know, superconduct at lower temperatures, because uh, liquid nitrogen is like 100 or minus 197, I think, degrees Celsius. So uh, I need something that can superconduct within that area. And like there, there are, um, there are materials that can, but I don't know exactly which ones work the best or which ones. Oh shit! There we go. So I'm going to uh, do some more research on that. Hmm. Because you know it'd be fun <laughs> for the actual like superconducting disc portion of the apparatus. Um, that's easier. I can probably just use uh, a ceramic co uh, composite that does superconduct in higher temperatures, or maybe even aluminum. But that's a big question because I don't think aluminum superconducts at. Well, actually, it, it depends. It sometimes does. It's yeah, I don't know. Again, this one I'm doing reset Franks. I've never, I've never actually worked superconductors. But this is all kind of not right now. Most of my, of my f research funds right now are going towards my actual products I started beforehand, like my suit and whatnot, and rocket projects. Because, you know, I have to finish those at some point. Uh, we'll warp there and I'll end it there. Because this video has gone on for 23 minutes. Oh, and we're already here. Or not. What the fuck are you doing? What, did, what you have to realign? Did we pass by something? The f what? Mm -hmm. What, what? I guess we just had to stop halfway through and, uh, I don't know, go to the Space 7-Eleven. The Space SO. Actually, I don't think there'd be space SOs. Maybe space 7-Elevens, probably, because they're everywhere. Space Starbucks, for sure. Seriously, we're just waiting for the first Starbucks on the moon. <laughs> it's like, the minute um, someone puts a hotel on the moon, like a commercial hotel, or even just in orbit, there's going to be a Starbucks. There's, like, there's already a coffee maker on the space station. Like, I shit you not. So there, there, there's going to be a Starbucks somewhere on the, uh, in space, and I'm, I'm guessing on the moon. Again, I'm not a huge proponent of a colony on the moon, because the gravity on the moon is low enough that it would still, like, just living there would still cause bone and muscle issues, and don't know if we can even reproduce in that environment. Mars is, 
has higher Mars has high enough gravity that we can at least survive there, so that's an option. For sure, a 7-Eleven on the moon or on Mars. When the first colony gets put up, it's it's gonna happen. I don't hmm. I'm trying to think what to do after I make this video. Well, I'm gonna have to upload it, I suppose. Oh yeah, actually on that note, it is September 21st, so it is International Peace Day, so uh, go hug somebody, like seriously, go, go hug someone, it's, it's International Peace Day, like do it or I'll come to your house and I, I'll punch you and then I'll hug you and then I'll punch you again, and I'm sure someone out there would probably enjoy that, and then it would get really creepy really fast, <laughs> or no, it depends on the situation I suppose. All right, yeah, ooh, coming up on the poles of this year planet, right next to it. And this time, when we jump out of this this planet's gravity well, we're gonna jump away from it and not through it, because that was quite a disaster. Info: a biogenic aerial unicellular blah blah blah. Well, that was exciting. Um, thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I'm gonna get ice cream and. Um, Oh, actually, it's 2 in the morning. Hmm. I'll do something, and then I'll probably go to bed. So, thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and space.